Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing great and welcome to episode 2 of the Tekken 7 Lab. We'll be doing things a bit differently today with me mostly talking to you guys. Although if you're lucky you might still get some notes on screen. Today we'll be focusing on one of the new characters to Tekken 7, Josie Resort. More specifically we'll be looking at Switch Stance which is this stance here where Josie's back foot comes in front of her. From this stance Josie gets massive plus frames and she can mix you up with lows, mids, highs, with various counter hit launchers, homing moves and all kinds of other properties with these moves that can lock you in and make you struggle to know how to get away from this stance, how to defend against this stance and how not to get completely destroyed by this stance if you haven't labbed it properly. When facing a Josie who likes to constantly use this stance as a lot of online Josies do, you'll have a better chance to survive it and have your chance to counter attack. It's worth noting that as a mix-up stance, it would be badly designed if there was an easy way to get away from all of her options. There are ways to massively improve your chances of getting away without taking too much damage, but I'm not going to be able to teach you how to just completely easily destroy the stance, beat it in every way possible. You're going to have to play it smart, play the odds, and play the mix-up as well as the Josie player. So firstly, how does Josie get into this stance? She has four options. She has one, two, four, which is three highs in a row. Two, four, two highs in a row. Down three, four, a low into a high, and down forward four. Those first three options, one, two, four, two, four, and down three, four. The four at the end of them is the exact same move with the exact same properties. It's a high, it's plus 11 on block, it's plus 21 on hit, and on counter hit, it's going to launch. Uh, I hit with a jab there. There you go. It's going to launch uh, just like a Magic 4, and uh, from switch stance you hold forward you can go into a jab and you can spin like that so she can get a full combo if she's sharp and the player confirms the counter hit they can get a full combo from this at any point so those first three options all work in exactly the same way which is the the move that gives her the plus frames that lead into the mix-up is a high that you can duck for this reason the two best ways for Josie to get into switch stance are 2-4 because it's much harder to duck than 1-2-4 and down 3-4 which are much easier to react to. Down forward 4 is the other strongest option to get into switch stance though it is very slightly different with its properties. It's obviously a mid, it's very fast, it's 14 frames so it would really work as a good long range mid poke at 14 frames that's really strong it's also plus 11 on block it's slightly less at plus 16 on hit and it's also exactly the same on counter hit it's plus 16 on both hit and counter hit it doesn't have any special counter hit properties the first thing to mention is that if you get hit by any of these options and you're at minus 21 or minus 16 uh, obviously block. Uh, choose whether you want to block low or block high, but block. There is no way that you can ever interrupt any of her options. You're extremely unlikely to ever be able to sidestep or sidewalk unless Josie goes into the crouch dash out of switch stance, which we will go into uh, closer to the end of this video. However, when you block, for all options you'll be at minus 11. There are ways in which you can find your way out of certain options and then at this point you're playing the mix-up game with the Josie player. You want to guess what they're going to do and try to beat it. So let's go into her options from Switch Starts. The first and maybe the most important option is Switch Stance 1. 
I'm going to set uh, Josie to do switch stance run with record in practice mode here. So, how does switch stance one work? Switch stance one is a 14 to 15 frame high. It is completely uninterruptible, which is important because it's a counter hit launcher. There, I just tried to hit Josie with a jab, which is obviously the fastest move I can do, and I've got counter hit launched. The only way to avoid this move, as it is either impossible or incredibly difficult to sidestep or sidewalk in either direction, is to duck. Because even a down jab does not duck in time. It becomes active before it ducks and gets counter hit launched exactly the same as a jab. So there's no benefit to doing a down jab here. So what do you do if you don't duck due to the other options that she has out of this stance, the mid options? On block, Josie is left at minus seven to six, so it's completely safe. You cannot punish this move. But as you saw there, I used a while standing move. This switch stance one on block forces you into crouch. And seeing as Josie is at minus seven to minus six, you can kind of look at that as if you are left in crouch with uh, three to four plus frames. For a lot of characters, including Leo, being in crouch within range of the opponent with some plus frames is actually a pretty good spot to be in. If I'm left in crouch here, Leo has a pretty powerful full crouch mix up. I can go with the sweep, and if the Josie starts getting used to my response with that, I can go for my mid, or, or you know, a multitude of mid moves, and at that point, she is actually handing the mix-up to me. If she goes for switch stance one, and I block it, she's handing the mix-up to me at that point. With a character that has less of a full crouch mix-up, you, you can still mix up with uh, low pokes and mid pokes for hit you'd be less dangerous, but you're still taking advantage of the fact that while she is safe, she is handing you the advantage, you can use it. So, to quickly go over the move, you cannot interrupt it, you cannot sidestep it, you cannot try to jab your way out of it, you cannot do anything other than duck. Obviously, if you duck in time, you can launch and get a full combo. That's the reward for ducking switch stance is that you'll avoid the high or the low option. So let's get into the low option next. Switch Dance Free is her low option. As you can see by the animation, it is a homing move. So once again, you cannot sidestep or sidewalk this move. If you are trying to avoid Switch Dance 1 or 3 and you duck, you will have blocked it. It is minus 13 on block. So if you block this, a lot of characters at minus 13 is where they get a kind of mid punish between their 11 frame and their 15 or 16 frame launcher where they have a decent punish, uh, like a shoulder tackle, a knockdown, some kind of decent punish for this. So it's pretty important in this matchup to know which of Josie's lows are minus 13 and to punish them with something better than most characters uh, whilst dying for. Obviously Leo's is much more powerful than most. So, it's homing. It is also a counter hit launcher. So once again, swinging back here uh, without an idea of what you're doing is very dangerous. However, Switch Dance 3 is not uninterruptible. You can interrupt it at 10 frames and at 11 frames you trade. So, what that means is, is that at 10 frame moves, your one, two, whatever your 10 frame punish is, you can interrupt switch stance free. I'm not necessarily telling you, you should always try to interrupt switch stance free. As you've already seen, switch stance one is uninterruptible. If you go for a jab after she goes into switch stance and she chooses to do switch stance one, you have just eaten a counter hit launcher you're going to eat upwards of 60 damage and some serious wall carry. But Switch Stance Free is interruptible, and that's important to remember as we go on to the other options. One more thing about this move 
that's uh, interesting, along with a lot of other low pokes, which a lot of people don't really pay enough attention to, is that Switch Stance 3 is actually minus 2 on hit. You get hit with this, say you block whatever her entry into Switch Stance is, 2, 4, down, forward, for whatever it is, you eat the 3, you've eaten a, a little chunk of damage, nothing too serious, and you get plus frames. You can actually uh, pressure at that point. You know, it's only two frames. It's only two frames of advantage. But it's worth noting that you get hit. You don't have to massively respect what she does next. You can sidestep. If they don't know that they're at minus frames, you can actually possibly counter hit launch them if they are trying to uh, if they're trying to take advantage of the fact that either they think they're at plus frames or they think that you think that they have the advantage. So I think that's everything I have to say about Switch Stance 3. Let's look at the mid options that she has out of Switch Stance. Switch Stance 2. Switch Stance 2 is, once again importantly, a counter hit launcher. It is a mid. In my opinion, uh, Switch Stance 1 and Switch Stance 3 are the moves that create the mix up here. The, they both stop you from sidestepping. Uh, they're both counter hit launchers. Uh, the one is uninterruptible. So the problem with the fact that those are the moves that are the best from this stance, in my opinion, is that they're both avoided by ducking. So Josie has to have her mid options so that she can mix you up here. A lot of the time, uh, the Josie player is going for less reward. If they're going for either of these mid options, they're going for less of a reward. They're counting on the fact that you're trying to avoid her stronger options from the stance. So, switch stance two is a mid. It's a counter hit launcher. It is minus six to minus five on block. So once again, it's absolutely safe, but you do get some plus frames so you can pressure yourself. On hit, it is plus five to six which means that you, you are going to have to respect their follow-up one way or the other if, they, if you get hit with this. Now, this move is also interruptible. It's interruptible at 11 frames. So your 10 frame or your 11 frame is going to work here and you should trade at 12 frames. Yeah. You trade at 12 frames here, so once again you can get out with your 10 frame. And obviously, if you are going to try and interrupt her from this stance, you should be going for your 10 frame because your 11 frame will trade with the other option. Okay. So this move is very difficult to sidestep or sidewalk in either direction if it is possible at all. So another move that keeps you in place makes you not want to sidestep or sidewalk. It is, however, worth noting that Leo's uh, forward 2 plus 3 will actually escape this. As you can see, it gets the punish there. So, it is possible that I'm just really no good at all at sidestepping at the right time. Or Leo's forward 2 plus 3 just has better evasive qualities than uh, sidestepping under so many plus frames from the opponent. So it is also possible that other characters like Feng and Jin and Horang who have evasive moves like Leo's forward 2 plus 3 can do something similar and get out of this move. Uh, let's go on to the final manual option that could come out of Switch Stance which is the other mid, Switch Stance 4. Now this is the only option out of the four manual options out of Switch Stance that isn't a counterfeit launcher. This move is actually a knockdown and a wall splat on both normal hit and counter hit. So it's the slowest option, it's by far the most linear option. You can side walk it in both directions and you can easily sidestep it to your character's left, uh, which if you're playing on the left as most people do is sidestepping into the background. And I just messed it up there, but, and again, okay, wait a second guys. There you go. So you can very easily, if you're, you know, not me, you can very easily sidestep this move to the left, more consistent to sidewalk it. Sidewalk it to, into the background if you're on the left and you're going to avoid this. Now, as we've seen, you're likely to get hit by a lot of the other options from the stance if you try to sidestep 
at all during a switch stance. So this is only really something that you should consider when you are backed up to the wall and when you'll get a wall spot with this because it's really the only time where this option is worth going for for the Josie player. There's no launcher here. Out in the open you get knocked down with a chunk of damage. If they really think you're going to duck, they can go for this because they're thinking they're not going to get counter hit, they're just going to duck. This is the chunkiest knockdown option I've got here and they can go into a crouch dash mix, crouch dash mix up. So they might do it but really they're much more likely to do it at the wall and at the wall it is worth considering trying to side walk this to your left. Now what else is there about this move? It is minus nine on block meaning it's one frame away from being punishable but it is completely safe. So after taking this you really can go in for your mix up. You can dash into a big low, you can go for a throw mix up, there's, a, there's all sorts of ways that you can mix your opponent up after this. They are at heavy minus frames, even though you cannot get anything guaranteed. Once again, this move is also interruptible. It's interruptible at... Once again, you'll trade at 12, which means it's interruptible at 11 and 10, once again. Uh, the 11 frame will work here. And the 10 frame... The 10 frame will also work. As you can see, the interesting thing about this, uh, about Switch Stance 4, is that if you interrupt it, you're actually going to float the opponent, and uh, you can you can get a full combo here. You're going to get a lower damage combo due to the float, but you can completely get a full combo with wall carry, and you can really mess up your opponent, and they can be in big trouble because they went for this option and you decided to go for a jab. So. Now that we've gone over the four major options from Switch Stance that don't involve something slightly more complicated, what can we say? If you jab during Switch Stance, you are actually going to be three out of the four manual options out of the stance. So it is a high risk mix up situation for you to put yourself in because the switch stance one is going to counter hit launch you if you go for a jab. But you are going to be free of the other options. So it is a high risk. It's a high risk option to go for. But you can go for it and try to try to just interrupt the stance, let them have a go next time and then basically you you're creating a 50-50 for yourself between I'm going to interrupt your stance or I'm going to duck. If you know about switch stance one, then you duck. And that is your kind of high risk, high reward 50-50 for yourself. If they go for switch stance one and you jab, you're going to get counter hit launched. If they go for switch stance one and you duck, you're going to launch them if you're sharp. If they go for any of their other options and you jab, then they're going to take the jab and you get your plus frames or they get floated and if you duck they're going to have to go for switch stance 2 or 4 to hit you with the mid and neither of them are all that dangerous as long as you don't get counter hit by them. Which leads me to by far the most important point when it comes to countering switch stance is that just don't get counter hit. Just never ever get counter hit by the stunt. When you see this animation, when you just familiarise yourself with 2-4, 1-2-4, down forward 4 and down 3-4, if you familiarise yourself with the animation for these moves, there's no need to get counter hit by them. I've mentioned that you can jab your way out of three of these options, but think about it, if you just block either low or high, the worst thing that can happen to you is that you take one hit you take one hit and usually you're in a decent enough position to respond. But most of the time you're going to block the move and actually be at frame advantage. If you stand and block, the only thing that she can do is switch stance free. Switch stance free is going to give you the frame advantage after she hits you with it and it doesn't do that much by itself. If, if you just stand there and block through all of her switch stance options, this is the worst thing that can happen to you. 
and you get your frame advantage. You're at plus two after she hits you with this. So there are quite a few options here. You can play your high risk option of either jabbing your way out or ducking, both of which beat Switch Dance Free, obviously. Or you can just play it safe, play the safer way, and just stand there. Just stand there and block, and really the worst that can happen to you isn't all that bad until she starts doing crouch dash mix ups, which I'm going to go into in a second. And I'm back. Sorry guys, I had to quickly run for a drink. I did not expect this video to take this long. So, when you have convinced your opponent that you are blocking Switch Stance properly, you're dealing with Switch Stance properly, you are getting the better of these exchanges, or at the very least, they are not getting the reward that they want out of Switch Stance. At that point, the Josie player is very likely to start going into Crouch Dash mix-ups. Josie, when she's in Switch Stance, can hold forward or press forward to go into her Crouch Dash, which she usually does with the usual forward, neutral, down, down, forward motion. Uh, she has several moves out of this Crouch Dash, but there is something I want to really quickly touch upon that I was supposed to talk about earlier on in the episode, and that is about the entries into Switch Dance once again. I have recommended that you practice being able to duck these three options for getting into switch dance. Obviously it's not the easiest thing in the world, you're not going to be able to do it every time, especially for a 2-4, but it is something that's worth practicing and getting better at. And the other thing is how this actually locks out most of the other options that she can do after her 1-2. So she has 1-2 down 4 if you duck, to duck the uh, switch dance mix up, you're also going to block the 1 2 down 4, which is actually minus 16 and launch punishable, which is obviously really bad for a, a really little low extension here. She can also do 1 2 down 4 4, which is a big, chunky knockdown high. But once again, if you're ducking, you're going to block the low, duck the high, and then you can also launch punish that from crouch with your while standing moves. So, this is really dangerous, and really the only reason Josie would ever do 1-2 down 4, because there's really no reason to ever do 1-2 down 4-4, four, four, is if she's going to mix it up with 1-2-3, which is a mid extension to her 1-2, and I'm sure as you'll be able to tell, if you are trying to duck 1-2-4, you will get hit by 1-2-3. However, 1-2-3 is actually minus 11 if you block it and more importantly it's really not that big of a deal you would much rather eat the damage of the free by itself because you will have blocked the one two you'd really much rather eat the the damage of the the mid extension here than you would having to take the mix up of switch starts which can still be really dangerous the most important reason to not worry about one two three however is just that it, it's, it's just the least rewarding option out of all of them. Your opponent is very unlikely to want to mix you up with 1, 2, 3. And at the point that you've convinced them that they're going to have to start doing 1, 2, 3, you are doing amazing in this matchup. If they're using 1, 2, 3 against you, it's because you're ducking her 1, 2, 4, her 2, 4, or her 1, 2, down 4. It is because you are dealing with this matchup properly and you should not worry about 1, 2, 3. And once again, if you block it, it is punishable. It's minus 11. That is what I wanted to clarify from earlier. Now let's get into her crouch dash mix-ups. So the four moves that she has, uh, four moves, there's one with an extension. First, we'll go into crouch dash one, which you probably won't see all that often. It's actually mostly used in combos. Crouch dash one is like a little jab. It's not exactly the same as a jab, but it's not plus on block, and the only extension off of it is a second high. It's a high high, like I say, mostly used in combos. Obviously, the solution to this is to just duck. Is to just duck. If you see the jab at least, then you can duck the extension and launch her from crouch. Easy. Once again, you're not going to see this option very often. It's more 
And once again, it's at the point where you've really convinced the Chelsea player that they are not going to get you with this. This is to kind of catch you. This is to catch you if you're dealing with not only the switch dance, but also the crouch dash mix as well. And you can also, let me record this very quickly. You can also walk this, side walking to once again your left, or uh, if you're on the left into the background, to your character's left, to their character's right, you can walk this easily, which includes the extension. The extension does not have uh, very good tracking in, in comparison to what it looks like. As a round kick, you'd think it would have better tracking, but if you side walk the, the one, you will also avoid the three. And if she goes for the one free, she will have been in her animation long enough that you're going to get an easy punish. What are her other options? The one that you're likely to be most familiar with is her crouch dash free. This is a move that Josie players like to use in general, not just out of switch dance mix-ups. But once they have you stood there, if you're not jabbing them out of their pressure, or you're not ducking, then they can choose that instead of going for this low, which isn't as damaging, and as I've said is actually minus on hit, they can go into crouch dash. And they can hit you with this big crouch dash free. It is plus four on hit. So this is a low where you get hit by this, you take a big chunk of damage, and then you're also at minus range. You're also having to take another mix up if they decide to carry on attacking. On counter hit, it's also a knockdown, which gives a guaranteed follow-up if you're fast enough. You can get enough crash dash free, it does a big chunk of damage. And this is also completely sidewalkable to the left. To your left, as you can see, once again completely walkable. There's a pretty consistent theme with uh, the crouch dash that in general, if she does the crouch dash out and open, sidewalking to your left is a very good idea. If she tries to get you with it from a switch dance mix up, if you're fast enough, if you're sharp enough to react to the fact that she's gone into a crouch dash, then you are going to uh, sidewalk to your left and avoid all of the most important, most dangerous options, including this low. Obviously, once again, if your immediate option to switch dance is to jab, you're actually going to be uh, one of the reasons not to jab your way out of switch dance and one of the ways that she can start mixing up if your interrupting moves out of switch dance is that she can actually crush the jab with the, crou with the crouch dash, at which point she can start mixing you up with these moves. And the mix up is, the main mix up is between this low and crouch dash 2. Crouch Dash 2 is a very punishable, very dangerous mid, it's a huge launcher. Uh, Josie is typically a relatively low damage character, but off of this launcher she can get 70 damage pretty easily. Um, it's pretty nasty. It's also very punishable on block. At the right range it is minus 14. Sorry, try that again. Yeah, you see the punish there, that's a 14 frame punish for Leo. A lot of characters have much more substantial 14 frame punishes than Leo does, including characters that can launch here, like Paul, Zhao Yu, Brian, the Mishima characters, they can all get a full combo punish for this. Uh, as well as other characters who have a mini combo punish, like Josie herself, Shaheen, uh, Asuka has a big knockdown low etc. This is very punishable. If they go for this, they're taking a massive risk for a massive reward, and what this means is that they're much more likely to go for the crouch dash free more often, which once again can be sidewalk to the left. So all of this obviously adds another layer to the mixer. You can jab to beat three of the four options out of switch dance, but the crouch dash will beat you. You can duck to beat the high and the low out of switch dance and the low out of the crouch dash, which is the most likely option. But if you do that, you are taking the risk. If you're not sharp enough to react in time to the crouch dash, you're going to get hit by the launch, which is really dangerous. In general, when Josie's crouch dashing at you, 
you want to be prepared to take quite a few of her Crouch Dash 3s in comparison to every one of her Crouch Dash 2s you take. If you've not been able to interrupt the Crouch Dash once you've seen it, if you've not seen the Crouch Dash and sidewalked to your left, then you really do want to just stand there and block and take the low if it comes. And remember that if you block, if you block the mid, to punish it, to punish it with something substantial, Usually you're going to be able to get a knockdown here if you want it. You're going to be able to collect some damage into some real plus frames. The final option out of a crouch dash is very uh, unspectacular. It's crouch dash 4 for Josie and it is her while standing 4. So this is basically the don't sidestep me, don't sidewalk me. If she does a really fast crouch dash 4 here it, it is the kind of the lowest risk option for her, it's completely safe. It's just to kind of stop you from doing any of your defensive options here. And uh, that's all it really does. It's not scary at all. This is once again one of the cases where if they're doing this, it's because you're dealing with it properly. Which means that at a high level, Josie players actually use this a lot, it's really effective. But you shouldn't be scared of it. It's there to stop you from dealing with things properly. It's there to be a tiny little chunk of damage that the Josie player can get on you if you're dealing with the stance properly. And really what I'm hoping with this guide is that that is what you can turn Josie's switch stance into. You don't want to be getting counter hit launched every time she goes for one of these switch stance mix ups. You don't want to be every single time she's in switch stance, look, now she's done a 60 damage combo on you, 65 damage combo on you, you're at the wall, you're taking even more aggression from the character with her wall splatting grabs, etc. You don't want to be taking that. If you take, if you block this, it's fine, and you can get a full crouch mix up. If you block any of the other options, it's fine. If you duck and you take switch dance 2, it's fine, you've taken a little nip. If you stand there and you take switch times free, it's fine, you've taken a little low poke and you actually have some uh, some plus frames of your own, in a way. You want to turn Josie's switch stance into something where she she gets a little mix up, she gets to get a little poke in against you, she does not win the round. She does not win the round for free because she went for the switch stance mix up. Anyway guys, I hope that really helps you against this character. She's a tricky one. It's hard not to try and break out of her aggression sometimes, and if she goes for switch dance at the right time, she can get that counter hit launch. That's what you really want to prevent. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll be back soon with more.